investigation firm alleging in a new court filing that Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, is actually the subject of multiple criminal investigations. The firm claiming that Hunter is involved in investigations relating to, quote, fraud, money laundering and a counterfeiting scheme. The documents coming to light during Biden's ongoing case with an Arkansas woman who allegedly had his child. It's a paternity case. Joining me now, former 2016 Trump campaign manager, senior advisor to the 2020 Trump campaign, Corey Lewandowski. Corey, happy holidays. Great to see you. Um, Great to, to see you, Greg. To, to what extent are, you know, Hunter Biden's escapades and, you know, suspicions of corrupt acts going to really damage Joe Biden's chances of being elected president? Well, clearly, Hunter has been the focal point of the Biden campaign now. And what's really interesting, though, is the past that Joe Biden has gotten for Hunter's activities. You know, no one wants to talk about Burisma. We don't really know how much money Hunter has made from his contracts overseas. He's now the subject of an ongoing lawsuit through the paternity problem that he has down south. And we know that he has to do a deposition. And, and this woman is asking how much money he's made over the last seven years, which would trace back to the period of time when his father was the vice president of the United States. The really interesting part here is that the mainstream media, by and large, is ignoring this entire story. And when Joe Biden's asked about it, he says, hey, it's a family matter, and that's the end. Can you imagine for one second if Donald Trump or Mike Pence had the same issue potentially transpiring, and their answer was, it's a family matter. It would be merciless <laughs> attacks on them. But, hey, it's different sets of rules for Joe Biden and the Democrats. You know, Joe Biden has had to wrestle with his son's questionable activities for years. And now there's a new videotape that's emerged of NBC's Tom Brokaw um, calling out potential corruption by Hunter Biden and confronting Joe Biden about it. This dates all the way back to 2008. So this is nothing new to anybody who's actually paying attention, is it? It's not new, but remember what Joe Biden said when this was brought to his attention when he was the vice president of the United States. He said, my office doesn't have time for this right now. So he literally just poo-pooed this idea. They knew about it. We've seen the pictures now of Hunter and Joe uh, golfing with their business partners. Clearly something probably illicit took place overseas. It'd be very interesting to know how much money Hunter Biden made from his direct relationship with his father serving as the vice president of the United States. It is a direct correlation. Look, what we know is Donald Trump made a phone call and the House Democrats decided to impeach him over a phone call and a transcript, which everyone read and agreed there was nothing wrong with and the call was perfect. Joe Biden actually went on television and bragged about the fact that if something didn't transpire, they were gonna hold a billion dollars. And hey, that's okay, because it's Uncle Joe. It's crazy Joe, it's whatever you wanna call him, but it's right. a different set of rules. Joe Biden's worst days are still in front of him. I'm not convinced he's going to be the Democratic nominee. His son is an albatross around his neck right now. And it's really too bad because you want to keep your family separate when you're in public life. But Hunter has clearly profiteered so much from his father's job as the vice president that the American people have a right to know exactly how much money he's made. I want to ask you about the inspector general's report. Um, if you read it all the way to the end, it appears that there were 51 inaccurate statements, errors, omissions, deceptions, false representations, and outright lies, not to mention the doctoring of uh, some critical evidence by an FBI lawyer, but it appears that the FISA court's presiding judge, Rosemary Collier, only cares about that particular lawyer. Does that suggest to you that the FISA court, you know, isn't taking this seriously and maybe trying to protect people at the top of the FBI, formerly like James Comey. Well, James Comey and Andy McCabe and Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, we clearly know that they had a vendetta and an agenda to stop Donald Trump from getting elected and then have him removed once he was elected. The fact that they lied on their FISA application, which we now know, and Greg, you remember this, the first FISA application that the FBI submitted to the court was actually denied because it was so poorly done. Then they sole source stories, came back with the second application, and that Pfizer judge accepted it. 
We would call on John Roberts specifically to review the FISA review process and hold people accountable. That is a lawful document when you sign that FISA application that says it is honest to the best of your knowledge. We have no opportunity in a FISA application to hear the other side, the defense side. And look what that FISA court did to people like Carter Page, a man who was never charged with a crime, but an American who's being spied on right. simply because he wanted to see Donald Trump win an election. We're better than that, and people should be held accountable for that. Well, Collier's reaction to this is outrageous. It's an abdication of judicial duty. Her response needs to be, oh, kumbaya, let us know how you're going to fix the problems. Instead of holding people in contempt during a show cause hearing people like Comey, McCabe, even Rod Rosenstein, all of whom signed off on these applications with faulty evidence, it's, it's truly despicable conduct. And on the part of the FISA court in particular, Corey Lewandowski, thanks for.